I'm Ben and this is Neil and today we're going to role play some conversational Irish questions and answers on the theme of Halloween. So first we're going to read the lines and then we're going to return to each individual question and answer and just look at some of the key points of grammar. Martian Anail with Reg. Tamar Reg. All right, Glenn Martian. Here we go. On Malat Ihauna. Is Bralum Ihauna. Ach, Erin Rocher, Karen the Chinta Alinia asked Ungreden to a dive she. Credjim, gone iris. Ach, ni credjim is zombie. Tan cas go will on the zombie. Titcha, Sikhela. Cain Taum a Vegnilani or two Lachut, a Knaga Erendaris Iahauna. Beshid Hogum Holua Ocasaveus and Green Emhefui. Berinch the Nalani Bugga Hogum, Miss Louis. Cut a hook and two to the lanny. Meal shawin, no redagin the slon tula. And Darad, I have milk shine the hutch dove, no veo achron. Ah, took him rinch crowing a August turkey dove, Foster. Cadiad na nosana a viach eg de heilach i hauna, nor vi tu fein og. Lasamish chinic vows a gaji gach glean. Viu cal canon ogin den dinier, or a bwin arrogid ogis fania, curha ivalachon, igma waher. Jim Riemish Tlehit Sadachun to Foster. Merhample, view Ula or Snow in Mashi Nishke is Hayab Bre or Hyun in the Vale. Anava, good stuff. So now we just go back to the start again. And we'll take a look at each question and answer in turn and just have a look at briefly at some of the main points of grammar. So I started with on ma lath iha hauna. And on ma is just a standard way of asking somebody if they like something. So on ma lath translates literally as is good with you. So is Iha Hauna, which is the Irish or Halloween, good with you? And lath is the prepositional pronoun of the preposition le, which is with. And the answer, so um, what I said was, is bralum Iha Hauna. So you can see it's uh, the same structure, but I used a different word, bra. If we just wanted a very simple yes or no, the answer would be just, you know, an my lat. The answer would be is my or me my. But because I wanted to say a little bit more and say that I love Halloween, then I um, added more in is bralum ihahan. And then little extra comment there, uh, unfortunately, the fireworks upset my dog. Eredrochur, 
uh, you could almost translate as drucher or as bad time, if you like. But erin drucher means unfortunately. And current the nechinta alinya, the fireworks, the arty fires, something like that, nechinta alinya. Current shed as to mawadu. They they upset my dog. Ker as to for upset. And mawadu is what I said as an Ulster speaker. But my friends down in Kerry, what, what would you say, Ben? Mawadra. Mawadra. I think a lot of people would be more familiar with the word madra, but madu is what we say in Ulster. Um, yes, Gurmagat. So just moving on here to um, question number two. Um, this one is a question in the present tense using the verb cred, which is to believe. So I'm saying ungredentu. So after this un question form, we have what's called Uru in Irish, which is uh, eclipses on the initial consonant of that verb, cred. So um, the consonants that take Uru are B, C, D, T, G, P, and F. And here we have a G on a C. And then the two is U, as I'm speaking to Neil here. So do you believe? And then we have a dive she. So a taivse is a sort of a ghost or a specter in Irish. And again, we have this preposition i, meaning in. So do you believe in taivse, which is the plural of taivse? And again, following this preposition i, we have another one of these urus. And in this case, it's a t, and we have a d on a t. So do you believe in ghosts? So in the answer, uh, we have both the positive and the negative, which is very helpful. Remember that our question was on Gregin to, with that little G eclipsing the C, so you don't hear the C anymore. But in the affirmative, the positive, Gregin, Gregin. And uh, the, uh, the personal pronoun for me, for I, is baked into that there with that little ending im. Uh, and then the negative follows quite closely, ni chredim, ni chredim. So we have the negative particle, ni, which we use in the present tense and in other places. And that is followed by shevu on the following consonant. So we have this extra H, uh, which is known as shevu in Irish, when the first consonant gets kind of softened, more air coming through. Instead of cred, it's Lovely. So in Irish, we don't have a straightforward yes or no answer. So you need to listen to the verb that was contained in the question. And if you want to give as close as possible, a simple yes or no answer, you use the same verb as was contained in the question, generally in the same tense, but not always, because you might get a question in the conditional. Would you shut that door? And you might say, I will in the future, but usually in the same tense. And yes, and part two of this. I suppose there's a couple of uh, tricky parts on this. Um, uh, and cast, of course, is the case, not too far from the English. But Gwil on the Zambha is about saying that they that they exist, that they that they are here. You know, um, you could say we don't have an exact verb for exist, but this whole structure is saying that um, the the little prepositional pronoun on a double n is often translated as there. You know, that there's someone there, there's some you know um, present, if you like, so existing. And then at the end we have tiche asichele, um, fallen apart. So that's from the verb tich the verbal adjective tiche asichela. And of course, zombehe is the plural of zombie. Of course. And, uh, you, you might have thought, wait a minute, there's no Z in Irish. And there isn't, but we're going to make an exception for very important things like this, of course. <laughs> so there's a few words which, which, which take a Z or a V or a J, a very few, just where it wouldn't make sense not to do that. 
Lovely. So taking a look at my third question here. Can town of Agnalani or Tula Hunt Vignaga Erndaris Iha Hound? So this starts with what time? And this word keen um is basically two little words that came together into one. One is K meaning which or what. The other one is the definite article un, meaning the or the in English. Um, and that's followed by a male noun in the nominative singular that starts with a vowel. So after the definite article, that would take this prefix T. And because the definite article is contained in this little word cane, it's behaving the noun in the same way as it would if it was preceded by the definite article. So we have cane town. But say if that were a feminine uh, noun in the nominative singular, you wouldn't have that T. Cane, I'm sure what weather, but what time. Cane town. Um, so cane town of vague. So this is the verb be in the future tense. Yeah, vague. Then Nalani Otula, that's the local children. And the adjective there is in the plural because the noun is in the plural. Then you hear me say chut as though there were a H in the middle of that word, Hugget, that's a, a monster thing. And Neil would say Hugget, it's spelled mm -hmm. Hugget. Then a Knaga, knocking. So egg is like ing there in English. Egg Knaga. Aaron Durris, Iha Haun. So on the door on Halloween night. Okay, and Neil's answer. Shade hug them so the same structure they'll be to me, they'll be coming to me, and then the new part really Holua Ugasaveus and Korean Emahefui. So Holua Ugasaveus, um, as soon as will be, we're talking about the some something in the future. Um, so uh, Lua is about speed, quickness, um, and uh, earliness, in fact. And the tram here in Dublin is called Lewis because it's 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 speedy it'll get you there fast but we have this structure i suppose as as in english you know as soon as ho august is what we would have for as as ho august and um uh that's what we're using here and aveus is a form another form of uh, of the the future be there it's because it's following that little a ah. So it's technically a relative um, form of the verb, but um, you can just learn the structure um, rather than all the rules. And uh, and green, there's a H on green because it's a feminine noun, the sun. And uh, to talk about the sun has set, ta and sun or bet and sun, bet and sun, bet and green, ima hafui, ima hafui. It's a bit like saying gone under. Imeha is the adjective form of imi or imig, you might say, Ben, for to, to leave, to go. And fui is under. So um, as soon as the sun will have set. Lovely stuff. And like lots of things, there are a number of different ways that that answer might have been constructed. This is just one. Absolutely. It might have had lina grain in it, for instance, the sun. Oh, yeah, I like that one. Yeah. yeah. And then you had a part two there. Um, so we have our future tense of the verb be again, be, so will be. Rinch de Nalani Bioga, a number of the little children. Again, Lani Bioga, we had Lani Atula before. So if you find those adjectives in the dictionary, Atul or Bioga, that's the basic form. The adjectives are agreeing with the plural noun, so it's the plural form of the adjective as well. We don't do that in English, but other European languages have plural forms of adjectives as well. So they'll be to me or coming to me, nis luihe, that is the comparative form of lua, which we saw before. So nis luihe, um, earlier. And few at the end, just to say, even, you know, just to uh, show something stronger there. Lovely. So my fourth question there, Kada Hogan to Donalani Mil Sean Nurodegan Nis Slon Tula. 
So cod is what? Cod a. Ah. So what is it? Um, a hugging that, that you give um, and don uh, alani to the children. And then meal shawn, uh, sweet singular. Here we have sweets in the plural meal shawn. So these are subtle enough sounds in Irish sometimes when you're going from um, the singular to the plural. Um, subtle but important in terms of them carrying information. So meal shawn. Then we have no, which is our rud egan, something. So rud thing egan, some. Um, and then ni slon tula. Slon tool um, means healthy. And this is the comparative. So we go from slon to to ni slon tula. And the answer, and there are the two things. Um, I suppose there's a couple of things, even in this very short sentence, we should say in English, we would have two things with the plural of the word thing, but after a number in Irish, we don't tend to use the plural form, actually. We just use the singular form of the noun. So rud, not ruddy, which would be the word things, the plural form. And, and da, well, da is a form of the word uh, for two, it has a few forms. If you look it up, if you're if you're familiar with it, when we're just counting, we say a hain, a do, a tri, a do, um, and you'll often see if we're counting objects, um, something slightly different. D H A F A D A G A. So, G A C H A P A N, my hample, two cups. But here, there's no H, and that's because the article an is before it. And da rud, and uh, sometimes when we have certain letters meeting together, in this case the n of an and the d of da, when in two different words when they meet together, sometimes it sort of cancels any shavu or uru. So the shavu has been cancelled here, and the specific letters that happens with is n d t l s. Now usually we say dentals. D N T L S. Yeah, that's the handier way to remember it. Dentals. So sometimes if you see a situation where you think we should have Shevu, we should have Uru, but we don't, it might be because two of those five letters, D N T L S, have happened together, like in the words an da here. Okay. Very short sentence, but a lot in it. Um, the next verb we see. Um, so you would have to give them sweets or there would be trouble so in the and we have um, the conditional mood so that's in English when you're saying would you would have to or there would be trouble so that we see there is the conditional mood of the verb be again so we've seen that in the future, bay, and now here we have veu, or as I think Ben would pronounce beg and veich. Is that right? Veich. <laughs> veich. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the conditional mood in those two forms. Milshine a hoch of sweets to give them. That's the kind of a literal word order. Um, so sometimes when we have a direct object of a verb, that direct object comes first. Milsheim a horch, sweets to give. Um, but uh, not always. In other examples, if there's a preposition, eishtacht le kjol, listen to music. That would just be the kind of same word order we might expect if we're coming from English to Irish. And the last part of this sentence, togum, uh, which is the same verb as torch there. Torch is the verbal noun, togum is the present tense. I give Togum. Rinch Krona Augustorhi. Um Rinch for a number or some, you know, general quantity. Krona Augustorhi, nuts and fruit. And you can hear my Ulster accent saying crow at the beginning, mm -hmm. like a bird. Um, but Ben, of course, would say kno. Um so in the northern half of the country, sometimes N becomes an R. 
after another consonant. Um, uh, you had the word knaga as well earlier, Ben, and I would say kragu mm -hmm. with, with the C-N-A-G. So that's, um, uh, that's that one. Lovely stuff. So my last question there was kad iad nanosna avich eg the heilach iahana or be too fain oak. Um, so there are a few things here. Kad um, iad, what are nanosna? So a nos is a custom. Um, uh, so the customs in the plural there. Avich, here we have that verb uh, be to be in the past habitual. So things that they did every Halloween. So not just the one. Um, and the heilach there is your family, as in the family unit of a household. And uh, we have shevu and tailach there because we have the before it, your so possessive adjective there. So ihana we had Halloween night. Nur vi tu fein oak. So nur is when um, you to fein yourself were young. So here it's a, it's not quite an emphatic form, but we're putting a bit of emphasis on the fact that we were talking about the children, the local children who call mm. uh, to Neil's door. And now we're talking about um, what the habits of his family were when he was young. So we just put a little bit of emphasis on that. We were talking about this in one context. We're talking about essentially the same thing, but how it relates to you. So we have this. We could have Tusa there, but mm -hmm. which is an emphatic form of two. But this is two words, two fame, so you yourself. And I feel like this is the point where I should desperately try to claim that I am still young. I am still young. <laughs> Ben's point All still relative. <laughs> All relative. Okay. God bless you. Excuse me. <laughs> so the answer then, uh, as Ben said, we were using uh, in the question, um, the, the verb uh, view is how I would pronounce it, or view is what Ben said, and it's past habitual and I'm sure um, so it's talking about a habit in the past something you did more than one occasion in the past often or frequently so it's great for reminiscing this tense it's great for talking about the school days things you used to do when you were a kid the summer holidays when you were a child and festivals like this of course we always remember our childhoods I suppose so that's what we have a few more examples of that tense here so the first one is the verb las, which is to light, um, as in to light a fire or light a light. And las samish, we used to light. We would light or we used to light, is how that would be translated. And chinechrau is a uh, bonfire. And uh, just like the English, in fact, it comes from um, a fire of bones. Literally, that's where the term comes from. Um, which is certainly spooky enough for Halloween. Maybe we don't want to know any more about the origins of that. <laughs> um, so chinachra, that's the phrase for a bonfire, um, which is a huge feature of Halloween in Ireland. Uh, I don't know if that happens in every country for Halloween at all, but it's a big deal here. Definitely was when I was a kid. So Jean, in the garden, after the little um, word sa. We need shevu, so that's why there's the H on the G, sahar jean, and sa is a combination of i and an, and that's ended up as sa. To, so, so that, although it's one very small word, it means in the. And gach glian every year. Okay. And shin, uh, the next sentence, viu kal kanan agin tundinya. We would have, we used to have kal kanan for dinner. Um, so kal in Irish is uh, cabbage, ale, you know. Mm -hmm. Kanan means uh, leek. But, so, but put together, this is a dish with potatoes and veg mixed in together, um, which feels like a very traditional dish, but I'm sure it's something people do in other parts of the world too. So we would have, we used to have, Again, there's no verb, one single verb for have in Irish. So we're using the structure be and 
ink at the end. So uh, there used to be the Cull Cannon again at us. There used to be Cull Cannon at us. <laughs> be careful. Sounds yeah. messy. <laughs> yeah. Well, the translation is a very literal translation is messy, I suppose. That's a good way to describe it. Because um, the only good translation is we used to have, basically. Done for the dinner. Um, and then we have a little phrase that's uh, describing this, this meal a little bit more, another phrase adding more information about it. So, Cull Cannon, let me have a row. Win Adigid Ogus Fanya, Perhe Valachan Igmawah. So, this is a relative clause adding more information. It's like saying in which. Or, or, or where there was put, something like that. So uh, we'll go to the, the things themselves. Bwyn aragid, silver coins. So the word aragid is in the Tishal Ginejach here, aragid, coins of silver. And that, if you know a bit of French or something that's not too different from argent, to silver and for money. And then I believe that the name of the country, Argentina and so on, so I guess maybe a word from Latin originally. So coins of silver and August Fania, or Fania, as some people would say, a ring. So silver coins and a ring, kurha ivalach. Kurha is the adjective form of the verb queer, put. And kurha ivalach is like put in hiding, so basically hidden. So Kolkan in this meal, which had um, <clears throat> silver coins and a ring hidden in it, Igmuwahir, by my mother. So part of the um, traditional games would be divination games about predicting what's going to come. So sometimes, you know, if, if, you, if you found a ring, you would, uh, everybody would say, oh, you're going to get married this year, that kind of thing. Um, so some very old traditions in that. And that's a relative clause when we have um, a row or a rev. So it's like saying in English, in which, you know, it's a bit of a complicated structure, really. Lovely, Gurmagat and Col Cannon is a, a meal that's very, very close to my heart. And I really don't like when people make it with cabbage. Uh, it should always be kale, in my opinion. But I think that the canon in this uh, context means spotted with white. So it's oh. about the mashed potatoes being mixed in um, mm -hmm. the, the can. But the way I make it is more that the potatoes are, um, they have a little bit of green in them rather than the, the kale having a little bit of white. Yeah. Is, is the word canon, is it used for, for horses which have that kind of white spotting too, I think? I think it can mean that spotted speck yeah. with white. Yeah, so I suspect that that's what's going on there with the, the mashed potatoes. Yeah. Anyway, I love it. Plenty of butter. Nice. Um, so you had a, a second part there. Um, there we go. So we'll just take a look at that in English before we move on. Yeah, you can see we would like, we would have the kind of phrases you'd use to talk about um old habits a long time ago lovely so here's your part two here so another example of a verb in the past habitual dimriyamish we used to play or we would play Klehi tradishunta traditional games Klehi is the plural of Klehe and uh, the word foster has come up for me a few times here foster is more of an older word, um, people would probably know the word freshen a bit more often. But if you're in uh, anywhere in Ulster from Donegal to Belfast, we prefer to say Fosta for also or two. Marhampla, for example, um, or as an example, I suppose literally, viu ula ersnau imashin ishke. So viu, again, there used to be ula. Apples. Um, so that's the plural of ul, apples. And ersnau 
A lot of people, um, again, a lot of people will recognize this word as snarl, but uh, in Ulster we say snow. Um, uh, but a lot of people will recognize this word as meaning to swim or swimming. And maybe you could translate that as swimming in the water. Yeah, why not? But ursna means floating. So uh, not too dissimilar, really. Ursna is floating in this case here. Imashin ishke. So again, when we have the preposition e, meaning in, it's followed by uru, the little ellipsis. So we've got the m before the b. So we don't hear this b. We spell it, but we don't we don't hear it when we pronounce it. Imashin ishke. Bashin is a basin, quite similar. Ishke, of course, is water. Bashin ishke, a, a basin of water. Is another way to say ogus, meaning and. And then the last part, Chaiha bre er hyan i de veil. So Chaiha is an mokinilach again, gemaleshko. <coughs> um, in this case, because we're talking about the past, you can translate it as um, you would have to. Um, so back in the day, you would have to do something. Bre er, bre is um, the the noun form of the, the verbal noun of the verb bear, B-E-I-R, which has a lot of uses and can mean to give birth. So bre also means birth in a different context. Um, brehla is birthday, of course, very famous term too. But here, um, one of the other meanings of bre is to catch hold of, especially with the preposition er, to catch hold of. So you will have to catch um, bre er hyan on um, using the word kyan. Now, kyan basically means head, but we use it as a general pronoun. Um, so in English, you would say you would have to catch one. You know, in English, they use the word one for a very general pronoun. In Irish, we use the word kyan or sometimes pronounced kyan. So you would have to catch one in the veil in your mouth. So again, we have shevu on a word following um, do, which means year. Lovely, Kermagat. Thanks, Neil. So there we just have that one in English, just to, to catch up. So thanks for listening to us, blathering on there. There's a lot of information uh, in what we've given you there, and just in this simple five uh, questions and answers. And, you know, it can be hard to kind of absorb it all in an unstructured way. But happily, at Bite Size Irish, we have a lovely um, collection of online self-study courses where this information and an awful lot more uh, is explained in a clear way where you can just come back to it and learn at your own pace. Um, so if you're interested in that, we have a variety of different memberships that you can take a look at at uh, this URL here. So bitesize.irish forward slash memberships. So have a look at that if you're interested um, in diving a bit deeper into the sort of uh, grammar and terminology that we've been looking at uh, today. There are a lot of other elements to that as well. Um, our memberships have, uh, they're supported um, on a daily basis on an online forum. And then we have the facility to practice, uh, depending on your membership on a weekly or a monthly basis um, with other learners and people like myself who can help you with pronunciation. So have a look at that. And if you're just interested in uh, looking at a bit more about Halloween, Samhain uh, in Irish, about terminology and traditions uh, in Ireland, the, the birthplace of Halloween has to be said, then have a look at our blog there and um, put together a nice little collection of uh, videos and recordings on that topic. Anavan, again, if you'd just like to download our free ebook to help you to practice a little bit of Irish every day, you'll find a link in the description to download that. It's called 10 Secrets for Practicing Irish Every Day. Martian Anail, Gurmila Magad, Asadelum. And thank you all for watching. Slán gafóa. Gurmáhagad, slán. Check out Bite Size Irish courses and resources at bitesize.irish.